Hello lovers of the world, this is Cynthia speaking. I love my YouTube channel, which admittedly is something that is difficult for me to admit uh, because I often complain about running this YouTube channel and truthfully, I do see it as like another job or like work rather than a hobby or an activity that I enjoy doing. And honestly, it's for many reasons. In the early stages of setting up my YouTube channel, there was sort of an ethos that I've subconsciously uh, internalized after watching a lot of these like YouTube videos about like how to run a successful YouTube channel and that sentiment is basically uh, even though you're not earning money from it or even though it's still a hobby you should still be treating the YouTube channel as if it was your job so that way it's supposed to instill a certain kind of discipline in you in regards to things like deadlines, content creation, marketing, etc. And that you're supposedly, it's supposedly much more likely for you to treat it seriously. I don't necessarily regret thinking like this from the beginning because I am quite satisfied with the amount of skills that I've uh, earned from thinking like this throughout the years. But now I am trying to find a good balance of taking this YouTube channel seriously and still enjoying the work that comes from it. So I'm not really sure what to call this video because it's basically just me ranting and trying to work out my own relationship with content creation and I'm kind of hoping that maybe my thoughts and my own like articulation of my struggle will help somebody else who might be feeling the same way as I am. At the time of posting this video, uh, I'm still overseas in my vacation to Australia. So I actually came up with this idea while I was planning out my trip. I'm actually leaving in two days, so I kind of procrastinated my uh, itinerary planning. I Honestly, I think the itinerary planning is going great right now. A lot of it is just like to do with researching places to go to. And like now I'm quite excited. In the beginning, I was nervous, but that's beside the point. What I was also concerned with is like what to do for while I'm gone. I have a video lined up for next week for this coming Friday but I don't have one for the week after and I was like oh do I want to take a break from posting and so I can just focus on getting to Australia and like take a break from YouTube or do I want to like try to find a video try to like squeeze out a video in time because I feel like I can do it I feel like I trust my own skills enough that I can see myself kind of achieving that goal so I was trying to brainstorm like what even could I do in like su such a short amount of time that was still quite meaningful and didn't seem rushed. Um, and, I, and that was kind of like at the back of my mind while I was looking for places to see in Brisbane, which is where I'm going. While I was looking up at places in Brisbane though, the first thing I looked up was like bookstores. And for those who are not familiar with me, I am a huge fan of collecting books. And I particularly love shopping secondhand books. There is, it started off as a way to kind of fuel my book collecting addiction without like spending so much money because like obviously buying secondhand books is cheaper than buying fir like firsthand books while also being environmentally like conscious. Like obviously it's a more sustainable way of shopping books. Um, but it has sort of evolved into its own like hobby. It's kind of like a special type of hunting for a special like or discovering something new um, and like unique and not really like common so I take a lot of pride and joy in like going to secondhand bookstores and seeing like what I can find that way but of course even though it costs less than buying first-hand books they still cost money and obviously they take up a lot of space and that's always something that I've been like I do feel guilty about so in a way I tried a lot to like justify buying these books even though they are like a harmless hobby of mine. Another thing that the YouTube channel has been great for is I guess being that scapegoat for my my hobbies. So instead of just like buying a book, I can think to myself while buying it like, oh, I can film a book haul and then that com becomes content. And so there's less guilt in buying them because now it's sort of like a business expense in a way because like, again, I'm thinking of YouTube chat of the YouTube channel as a job there's less guilt in like succumbing to the temptation of buying books if like at the end of the day it like feeds into something else like there's another use for it but then i just feel like why do i have to feel so guilty about my own hobby when it's like 
not hurting anyone. Why do I have to have the channel as a scapegoat in the first place? The first question about like feeling guilty about buying books is sort of like related to my own perspective on like capitalism and the guilt of having privilege of buying and collecting things. But I'm trying to focus on the second question because this video is about my relationship with content creation. Why is it that I have to use the YouTube channel as like a scapegoat when I can just have when I can just do fun things and like happen to record it. I've, I've come to realize that it's really good to recognize your privilege and guilt is a really important emotion to feel in the first place because it always leads to like what you can do to like alleviate that guilt because there's something there's like your brain knows or your heart knows that there's something that's wrong. It's and the guilt is there so that you can actually do something about it. And so obviously that guilt comes from the fact that like, oh, I feel guilty that I have all this privilege in buying stuff when like really other people are struggling and stuff but like I have to just keep telling myself that like I earned this money like with my own hard work my own guilt is tainting the way that I can enjoy the privilege of buying things that I can buy and so it's like what's the point of feeling this way when the the pleasure of having this pl privilege is like not even relished in the way that it could be you know it's not like I'm a billionaire that's like ruining the environment by like <laughs> like going from one country to the other on my private jet you know i'm buying like a five dollar book from an independent bookstore this guilt really shouldn't be something that i have to think about but i guess because you you live in a society and you feel like it's your job as a consumer or like an individual to like help climate change it's kind of like anyway i that got into a huge tangent but what I'm trying to say is that like, I'm, I appreciate the fact that the YouTube channel can help me make excuses for myself with these like hobbies of mine and these pleasures of mine. But I don't, I shouldn't have to need an excuse to enjoy it. Like it's just, it is a thing that I like to do and I should be allowed to enjoy it, you know? So I'm trying to unlearn that. I'm trying to like not see the YouTube channel as an excuse. It's a thing where I can show myself. Another thing that I was thinking of when I was looking at places in Brisbane was that I came across like multiple museums and art galleries that I really wanted to go to. And really, the only thing that was like stopping me from going to all of them was like the prices of the tickets and the guilt of buying all these tickets. I was trying to again do that thing where I try to justify going to all these museums by thinking of like how it can contribute to the YouTube channel. And I thought about this great video essay idea about like museums and like what they mean for a specific place, like what they mean for memories, for history, and like what it means for like tourists coming in. And I was really excited about that idea to the point where I didn't feel so guilty about buying tickets anymore. And it's great that I got to that place, but like I'm sad that I have to like think about everything that I do in terms of the YouTube channel when really I should just be able to like do stuff without that. I feel like I shouldn't have to have a another reason to make it less guilt inducing. And I wanted to address that, I guess, like because so much of this is tied to like how I want the YouTube channel to kind of grow and develop over this year. This year my rep New Year's resolution, especially during my like break from academia, was to like produce more like video essay content. So much of that is like tapping into my own insecurities as like a because I haven't really posted a lot. It's kind of weird to imagine to think that like the YouTube channel has like changed my life in such a way that even when I'm on my literal vacation overseas, I'm still thinking about what I'm gonna do while I'm while I'm gone and so much of it is like trying to figure out like what even is that I want to do with this channel even this video that I'm filming right now is the only reason why it exists in the first place is because I didn't want to break the streak of posting every week so far this like start of the year like it's a great thing that I it's great that I've been able to do that and I'm sad that I'm not I'm not celebrating that enough instead of like being proud of myself that I've been able to post consistently for like five weeks now. Instead, I'm like, oh, none of, like only one of them is like a video essay. Only like three of them were like really scripted or like really well thought out. So really, instead of my New Year's resolution for the channel, instead of that being like, oh, post more video essay content, it should really just be like changing or like mending my relationship with 
the channel <laughs> so that I can feel like invigorated by it and not feel the weight of content creation so much on my shoulders because it's like it's not even my own job so I don't instead of that being freeing it feels much more like restrictive that way and I think a lot of it is to do with my own insecurity as like a like a small channel I watch a lot of like video essays on YouTube myself obviously they inspire me and they want me to be better and like they're the reason why I wanted to do this in the first place like seeing people do these video essays makes me want to do my own video essays but seeing the fact just like the fact that there's so many great well-researched really articulate well-filmed video essays kind of makes me just feel so much more small and makes me like question like should i even be doing this like what's the point all the ideas that i had are being done by other people and they're doing it way better and stuff like that and so so much i've i've had these thoughts from like the very beginning it's been three years since i've started this channel it's only a couple of days ago like last week that i reached 100 subscribers and it felt i it felt i felt proud proud of like reaching that milestone because it's like something that obviously i i i did on my own i see other channels and then they started like probably like less time that i started it but they have a larger following or like they have better videos and i'm like oh my god <laughs> am i just that bad and so i think i've just been like overthinking it lately because i'm like on my break from academia and so i'm staying mostly at home i don't i'm not really working right now i'm waiting for the semester to start so i have a lot of these a lot of free time to work on the channel but also like really ruminate on my failings as a content creator and then i think i had to be like what is it that i really want out of having a youtube channel like what do I, what do i want from being a content creator it's not like i want this to be my full-time job like i don't want this i don't want to have to rely on income of like it's that's not my dream like so what is it then like what do i want out of it it was it's not until like really really recently that i've been able to finally navigate through these feelings and the biggest thing the, the biggest things that have helped with that navigation are talking to people who actually watch your videos and them complimenting your videos like really helps seeing people like comment nice things on my videos and just like finding other people who value your ideas and like the way that you present them and have faith in what you say it's just so relieving it stops feeling like me posting stuff on youtube is less me talking to the void and more like i'm actually participating in a conversation i guess ultimately the goal is to let go of so much of that emotional baggage and double down on what I had wanted this channel to be from the beginning in the first place. I just wanted the channel to be a place to talk about all these things that I love. And so I'm trying to get to a place where I stop being so dismayed that other people have made videos on topics that I was already considering doing or like have made better videos on such topics. And I just want to feel more neutral about it. I want to feel assured enough in my own skills that I know that I can still contribute something new or different to the discourse whether that's providing a new perspective on the same topic or even if it's just the way that I articulate the same ideas you know what I mean I'm chasing and I I'm chasing like a YouTube channel that that I don't really want what I want this channel to be is a love letter to all the things that I find a lot of joy in and I want people to like share in the joy that i feel when i talk about these things thank you for watching this video it is a bit all over the place and a bit like unstructured in a sense but i'm glad i made this video anyway if you're new and you haven't subscribed yet please feel free to do so next week's video is going to be a review of all the albums and eps that i listened to in february all my social media links are down in the description as well as my coffee and Patreon page if you guys want to support my work. Um, that's it. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Feel free to... No. But if you haven't subscribed... No. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say.